Today we will talk about uh, just uh, Thanksgiving. We just celebrated Thanksgiving two days ago. So I will speak about Thanksgiving. Not about Turkey. <laughs> just the meaning of Thanksgiving. Thank God, why should we? Thank God, why should we? Actually, there's lots of people enjoy the blessings of life, the blessings of God, like they have, they enjoy money, they enjoy Turkey, they enjoy home, they enjoy good jobs, they enjoy lots of things, but they only forget to thank God, the giver of all these blessings. They are ready to use the blessings, but not to thank the one who gives them all these blessings. The lack of appreciation for God, I think it will grieve God. God will be grieved because nobody appreciates his blessings. Although our life are not all sunshine, but we ought to thank God or at least be grateful to God and express our gratefulness. David the prophet, he expressed always his grateful to God. Like if we look to Psalm 100, verse 4 and 5, he said, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. So, Prophet David is encouraging us too to thank God because he enjoyed it thanking him, he expressing his thankfulness for God and asking everybody to thank God too. Actually, thank God is not an optional, not an optional. For Christian, it's not an optional. It is a command. It is a command for us to thank God and thank God always. Thankfulness to God for his love, his care, and also his provision for our salvation. In Old Testament, they have a special choir just to sing thanksgiving songs. Special choir. So God asking us, and he loves to hear our thanksgiving giving. Several instances, specific people were assigned the task of giving thanks to God. But some people say this word just from their mouths, not from their hearts. Should we say it from our hearts? Yes should come from your heart. If you say it from only from your mouth, just continue. Continue saying God and it will come one day from your heart. Verbalizing your gratitude ultimately will bring out of your heart the feeling that you are missing. Just repeat it as much as you can. It will come from your heart. 
One day, a person was robbed and he stood in front of God and wanted to thank God. What do you think he will say? If you are robbed on the, on the bus, your wallet is gone. What do you say if you wanted to thank God? How do you express that? Huh? The most interesting answer I got, he said, Thank you, God, because the amount of money was not much. <laughs> and another answer I got, Thank you, God, thank you, God. I, I was not the thief. I was not the thief. Somebody else was the thief. But I was robbed, that's fine. So actually, we can thank God, even if we are robbed. Our wallet is gone, that's fine, but we still can thank God. We are not the thief, thank God. They just stole the wallet, not my life. Thank God for loss of thinking. Also thank you God, because they took my wallet, not my life. I never robbed before. This is the first time. Thank God I never robbed before. This is the first time for me to get robbed. So we thank God for that. Another story. One Sunday, it, it was uh, winter time and it was minus 10. Minus 10, it's so cold. And it was a storm, there was a storm that day. And Abuna and the church was waiting for the people to come. Nobody showed up. So he wanted to pray. And thank God what he will say. What do you think? Thank you, God, nobody come? Huh? What do you think he will say if he wanted to say a word of thanksgiving? Eh? That father stayed in front of the altar and said, Thank you, God, but don't repeat this again too much, God. <laughs> no people to pray with. <laughs> he asked God, Don't repeat it again because nobody to pray with. Actually, the Bible, the Bible gives many reasons why you should thank God. One of these reasons, one of the most important reasons give us why we thank God, we thank Him for His salvation. For His salvation. He saved our life. Most of the people will thank God because they are have good health, have a good wealth, have a good job, they have a nice car, a good home, and all this kind of stuff. But do we thank God for His salvation? That He saved our life. Look what Psalm 118 verse 21 said, I will praise you for you have answered me and have become my salvation. David the prophet is so happy and is thankful to God because God is his salvation. Also in Colossians, St. Paul said, Give thanks to the Father who has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. They thank God just because He saved us. Also, we thank God for His works and deeds. We thank God for His works and deeds. In Isaiah 25, verse 1, O Lord, You are my God. I will exalt You I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. He's so happy with the wonderful things God did. And in Psalm 
107, let them sacrifice the sacrifices of saying his givings and declare his works with rejoicing. We have to declare his works with rejoicing. O oh God, thank you. Thank you to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. We are asking to make all his deeds known to everyone. We are so proud of the deeds and the work of God. Also, we thank God because he helped us. He helped us. He will give us lots of help. Look what David said. David the prophet, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him. And Daniel the prophet said, I thank God and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might. So we thank God because he gives us strength, shield, wisdom, might, grace, and enriches us in everything. So we say thank you, God, for all these gifts, these, all these blessings to God. One of the main things also the Bible teach us to thank God for his characters. Our God is a lovely God. We thank him for his characters, for being goodness, loving kindness, righteousness, faithfulness, truth. We thank God for his character. Look what Jeremiah, Jeremiah in 33 verses 11, praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good. He just praise the Lord because the Lord is good. Nothing else, nothing else, just because he is good. And since he is good, we are so happy for that. And Isaiah said, O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things. Your counsel of all are faithfulness and truth. He thanked God for that, for his faithfulness and truth. We are so happy with our Lord. Also, we are Thankful for God for life. Life. Being just life. This is something we have to thank God for. Look what the Bible said. For he gave to all life, breath, and all things. God is the only one who gives life. And he sustains life too. We thank God also for giving us the Bible. Thank God so much because you give, you give us the Bible. Just imagine with me the world without the Bible. The world without the Bible, we will have a big problem. Why? Because the Bible is a light. He changed the life of a million of people from darkness to light. I met yesterday just a girl she converted from Islam to Christianity. So I told her congratulations. He said, I live in the light now. I live darkness. Yes, after she knew God and she knew the Bible, now she are living in light. One day a journalist went to make just a, a report about a, a group of people they used to eat human meat. Human meat. 
And then uh, when the journalists arrived, he saw the leaders of this group of people, and uh, he started to laugh when he found this leader holding a Bible in his hand. And he told him, Oh, are you still reading this old book? The journalist said, Are you still reading this old book? So the leader of the group said, Yes, because without it, you should be cook now in the kitchen. Without it, you should be cooked now in the kitchen. They will cook you because they eat human meat. So the Bible, it changed them from eating human meat to bless everybody and to bless the Word of God. So the Word of God, we have to thank God for it. We thank God for all His blessings. Also, we thank God for land of freedom where we live now, in Canada. There is lots of Christian people in, in, in some countries in the world, they can't build the churches easy. They can't pray in the church easy. They have discriminations. They torture Christian people. Christian people are not allowed to worship our Lord Jesus Christ in these countries. They don't allow you. But here you are allowed. Thank God for being in country like that. Respect freedom and respect Christian and give them the possibility to worship our Lord Jesus Christ without any problem. Also we thank God because He is coming again. Did any one of you thank God because He will come again? Thank you God that you will come again. Bob Shinoda said so easy to thank God in all these things. But we still need to thank God also during trials, during suffering. Should we, should we thank God during suffering or not? What do you think? Should we? Like if you lost your job, you thank God that you lost your job? If you fail in your exam, like mid-exam, you thank God that you fail in the exam? If you are sick, do you thank God that you are sick? If you have any problem or suffering, do you thank God for that? What do you think? Do we have to do that or not? Hmm? What do you think? The Bible, or the, at least the church, teach us that we have to thank God in all conditions, concerning every condition and in every condition. Even if we are sick, yes, if we are sick, we have to thank God. If we suffer, we have to thank God, even while we are suffering. But why? We have actually four good reasons to thank God even while we are suffering. The first reason is God is sovereign and in control. Because God is in control. You are suffering. Yes, but I am thank, thank you. I tell you, thank you God. Because even while suffering, you are in control. You allow me to suffer for good reason, I think. So we are thanking God. We are so grateful to God because He is in control of everything 
and at all time. Let us take an example of Job. Job. Job was the most righteous man of his days, and his relationship with God was very good. God was so pleased of Job. However, God gave certain permission. God gave Satan permission to afflict Job within a certain limit. So Satan to afflict Job, he has to take permission. He can't touch him without taking permission because God is in control. He never allows Satan to touch Job unless there is permission to that. In a single day, Job lost 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys it's in one day. And in the same day too, Job's seven sons and three daughters were killed. That was where the Gazars collapsed on them. Do you think Job can thank God after losing all that? Look what he did. He said, The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. After all this lost. Yes. Then God gave Satan permission to go even further and destroy Job health. And then Job said, Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall not receive evil? He accepted. Because Job realized a very important act. Very important fact. What's that very important fact? He, um, he realized that God was in control of all things at all times. He knew that God could have prevented the suffering. But since he allowed that, God had good reasons. Job chose to trust God. Me and you also, we should learn from Job and trust God, even if we have lots of problems in our life, we should trust God and praise God. Even if we have been now in the exam for years and years and I didn't pass it now, Praise God. We don't know. There is a reason for that. The second thing why we praise God, the first one, because God is in control in everything and forever. Second reason, if you are a child of God, everything is for your good. If you are a child of God, everything will work for your good. Look what the verses, what St. Paul said in Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to whom that they have, that they love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. So we have two important notes. The first thing is to whom that 
love God. The second thing is to whom are the called according to his purpose. As a son of God, God will direct our life. He will direct our life. He will guide us the way he wants. So it is so important to accept everything comes from his hand. Like just look to St. Paul. What happened with St. Paul? When Satan tormented the Apostle Paul with physical, with physical infirmity, St. Paul petitioned God three times, asking him to deliver that from him. However, God chose not to remove Paul infirmity. Why God chose to say no to St. Paul request? Why? The verb said, the verse said, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation. There was given to me a, th a thorn in the flesh, lest I should be exalted above measure. In God's eyes, the benefits of Paul's suffering outweighed the cost of it. God find out that the benefit of his suffering is more better than the cost of his suffering. Number three, why God allow our suffering and we should thank God for that too is every experience can produce godly character in your life. Every experience you go through create in you a godly character. So we should learn from all experience we go through and we just know what's the character we will learn. Like in Romans 8, 28, tells us all things work together for our good. But in Romans 8, 29, he explained how and why. In Romans 8, God said, all things work together for our good. In Romans 8, 29, the verse directly after it, it explained for that why. Thus look to verse 8, 29. For whom, the, for whom God foreknew, he also predestinated to be confirmed to the, to, the, to the image of his Son. So God confirmed us to the image of his Son. All, all suffering we suffer just to conform us to be the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the goal of God is to make us like his son, Jesus Christ. And if we yield by faith to God's goal of conforming us to the image of his character and the image and the character of his, of his son, Jesus Christ, so all circumstances in believer's life function as a tool to shape us to be as his likeness. So we consider all these suffering, we consider all suffering function as a tool to shape us and at the end will be like our Lord Jesus Christ. This is what God wants from suffering, just to be exact likeness of Jesus Christ.
Number four, why God allow suffering? Just for everything has the potential to teach us God's way. When God allow suffering for us, we thank Him because He allow us to know His ways, to understand His ways. He will let you understand His way. So if we thank God for suffering, so He will, he will show us His way. God's desire is to follow sheep with His children. This is the desire of our Lord, to follow sheep with His children. But can two people who have opposite perspectives about everything enjoy a true fellowship. Just two people have opposite perspective. Can these people, can these people enjoy a true fellowship? Of course no. If they are, if they have opposite perspective they will not enjoy the true fellowship. It's written in Isaiah 55, 9, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So his ways is higher than our ways. His thoughts higher than our thoughts, how we can get the fellowship with God. We can't. The only way is to allow God to shape us. To shape us. He put us in circumstances where He started to shape us like if you have a piece of diamond. Just piece of diamond. They allow some kind of tools to shape this piece of diamond in such a way and after this work it will be so precious. Why it reflects the light in different ways so it comes so precious. Before the tool work on this piece of diamonds, it's not that expensive. So we allow God to use suffering. To f this suffering will function as a tool to shape us and to be the image of Jesus Christ. God exposes us to the trials and afflictions which he uses to motivate us to seek him and to know him. So that, that has a reason why he allowed suffering for us. Look to Saint David, Prophet David, what did he say when he suffered? He said, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. It is good for me that I have afflicted. Because through affliction, he will learn the statutes of God. Also, Moses the prophet said the same thing. If I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know you. So God allowed suffering just to shape us to be his likeness and to know his ways. God loves us. That's why even if we go through any suffering, we thank God because he allowed us to be his likeness. Also, let us remember three facts about thanksgiving. 
The first fact is saying is giving is a choice. A choice. You can thank God or not. This depends on you. If you want to thank Him, that's fine. If not, that's fine. Like, let's go to the story of Jesus Christ when He healed 10 people with leprosy. What did He do? The 10 people were healed. They were so happy that they are healed. But only one returned back to glorify God and praise Him. It's a choice. The second thing is the sense saying is giving is a catalyst. You know what catalyst is? What's catalyst? You know what what's catalyst is? Hmm? Okay, causes the reaction. That's very good. Catalyst is a substance which you added to the chemical solutions to accelerate the desired effect. It does, it does it, and it can be removed at the end of process without affecting the final product. So thus, it accelerates. It accelerates the process. When you use thanks given in your prayers, you accelerate your prayers. Accepting your prayers. God will hear it. It will it change and became your prayer become stronger. And God will hear it if it is with thanks giving. Look what St. Paul said. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Why? Let your prayers and requests be made known to God. To make our supplications and prayers known to God, we have to added to our prayers thanksgiving. The last reason or the last fact is thanksgiving is a command. A command. Look in Thessalonians 5.10 and everything give thanks for this is the will of Do you want to know the will of God? Be thankful. The will of God in your life is to be thankful. So we have to be thankful for God. Why thankful is so important? Because this is the will of God. Being thankful makes you happier and healthier. Being thankful make you happier and healthier. Being thankful help you to get more blessings. If you want to get more blessings, thank God for the blessings you have. If you thank Him for the blessing you have, you will get more blessings. If you want your blessing to be more and more and more, thank God for the blessings you have. God will increase your blessings. And the last thing is, if you don't thank, you will complain. If you don't thank, you will complain. And God don't like people complain. Some of the people always complain, complain, complain. They know, they know nothing except complain. Look, the Israelites, 
The Israelites were delivered from slavery and given manna and Sina, and they were not grateful. They didn't thank God. What God did for them? Nobody, nobody of the people who complained entered Canaan. People who complain, they are not doing the will of God. So, if you wanted to do the will of God, just be thankful. Thank you for you, for all your, for your lessons.